You know what? The people at Cooper are a clever old bunch because this is a Leon, a Cooper Leon, which is a very familiar model name because obviously it's been a Seat for years and in fact it still is. But if you're studying marketing, I would do a deep dive on Cupra and just do a module on how they've reinvigorated a brand that has been around for a long time because I promise you, Cupra is a brand for loads of reasons, including this copper badge that has garnered interest from a much younger audience. This with, is, is just part of the starting lineup. Obviously, there's the Born, there's the soon to be on the road Tavascan, and these are cars that are just generating interest from an audience that don't necessarily look at cars anymore. But they've managed to do it. So it's, it's worth following just from a, a marketing point of view. What is also interesting is you can still get a Seat Leon and it's over 5,000 euro cheaper than this car with the exact same engine. So actually, Cooper have done something really clever because they're making more money from essentially the same car, just a much better looking, more sporty, more aggressive version of it. So I'm gonna take you on a little tour of the car first of all, and then I'll tell you what it's like on the inside. And we'll go for a drive and we'll do all the usual bits in a slightly different film version of what I normally do on the channel. I'm just trying different things, mixing it up, and I bought new gear, so I wanna show it off. Okay, so what do you need to know for starters? Right, well, there's the copper front on it that I was telling you about that's kind of got a transformer's edge to it and it just you know catches your eye straight away because it's different. So the headlights are, are quite similar to what you'll find on many Seats on sale today and of course the the Cupra lineup. A couple of creases across the bonnet make it look sporty. So when you look at the car from the side those alloy wheels straight away they're going to get your attention and you're going to say oh that's a bit different what's going to have the copper there. Now if you curb those lovely alloy wheels that's not going to be too much fun because you're going to notice it straight away but they do look sharp. So then we move around to the rear of the car and one thing Cooper have been doing for, well, since they've started to exist really, are really eye-catching rear lights. At night time, even more effective, but just, it's something different again. It's stuff that you just haven't seen before and that's what Cooper's all about. Some people do get very upset about fake exhausts. So we have one fake exhaust here and one fake exhaust there. So the actual exhausts are, well, somewhere down there. A little bit of a diffuser and a splitter going on. Another bronze Cupra badge. And when you get really close, you can see that Cupra lettering because it's also in black. So again, something very different on the eye, something quite striking and aggressive looking. And then your boot is your typical hatch just under 400 litres, which is on the smaller side, uh, it has to be said these days. If you like storing things away, you can't really do that in this car. Although there is a, so this slides out and you can drop that down. Well, actually you can't because you've got a bit of mild hybrid technology going on there. So actually forget I said anything. But in some models, you'd be able to drop that down and get yourself a slightly deeper boot space. The Seat Leon was always famous for actually having a bit more leg room in the rear than the Golf. And that kind of continues to be the case. Now I'm about five foot 10, that's my driving position, so it's not bad. That other seat here is slightly further back and you get an idea of the leg space there, but actually it's not bad. You can see climate control, two USB-C charging ports. It's all quite black and dark. That's kind of the idea with Cupra, sporty idea, kind of a, a cream headline here. So that breaks it up, but it is quite dark overall. Doesn't mean it's, it's not, not necessarily a bad place to sit. It's just, yeah, it can be dark at times. Main thing though, yeah, I've got tons of leg room and I can fit them under the seat down here. So it's actually quite easy to use. You've got seat backs on back of both seats. I've hidden a laptop there, well, kind of. Also your sun blind is here. Now I have a bit of a gripe here because years ago, that would be better material. It's very flimsy. Like that used to be the same finish and texture as the actual roof. And that's not the case. And I don't even know if that would fully, on a really bright day, you're still gonna get, I think, bits of sun coming in here. So when you're behind the wheel of your Leon, because it's got the Cooper treatment, it's got a much nicer steering wheel. Just, I love that logo, it really is cool. You've got fancier needles, they point straight down when they're not moving anywhere. 
infotainment system has been around for quite a few years. It, there's many layers to it. I have to say, I haven't had any bug issues whatsoever. It has not warned me to drive in the center of the lane. It has not told me to do anything that I shouldn't do. So these still don't light up. That will happen in future generations of models. So at night time, you can't see them. Um, if you have heated seats, you can double tap here to turn the heated seats on, but this car does not have heated seats, alas. Climate control, it is on the screen in the most part. Obviously, you've got the hot or cold buttons here, but as soon as you hit that, it is always there. It's always somewhere on the screen. You don't have to go into menus for it, and you can adjust the levels of it by using this button here. You might want two and tens and all that stuff. Uh, control it in the rear, because this car has rear climate control. You've got Android Auto and CarPlay, you can hook them up. And yeah, there's little inserts around the car just to, you know, again, change things up a little bit. Uh, the door cards also have kind of little lines in them, if you can see that there. And the seats also, a little bit of copper stitching throughout and right the way down. So yeah, like little bits of splashes of extra effort, but is it five grand's worth of extra effort over a Seat? Leon, that is the question. Now in this version of the car, the engine is urging you, it's pulsing at you to say, come on, press me, press me, and you can. Uh, also up here, you've got two USB-C charging ports, no wireless charging, depending on what model you're going for, um, but that would go down here if you needed it. You'll have cruise control, and that will all be operated uh, by the steering wheel, which is easy, and you can even change your uh, displays uh, straight ahead by just doing that. So that is the idea of the inside of the Cupra Leon. Uh, interesting enough, there's loads and loads of uh, different prices as well. It's, it's actually 30 grand in the difference from the entry price of this car to the 300 brake horsepower, kind of like a Golf 4 idea of it. So it's still like it's touching on over 60,000 euro. Cheaper than a Golf 4 uh, nonetheless, but I think, you know, when you spend that kind of money, you kind of want the one that is the Golf 4. Although in fairness, you know, it, it's all subject to taste and looks and what you're into. And actually, you know, this is not a bad looking thing at all, but it's just interesting the different prices. You can also get a diesel one, should you wish. Diesel, a two liter TDI, imagine that. Uh, there's also a pretty expensive jump between manual and DSG. That's over three and a half thousand euro um, if you want to get DSG, which this car is. It's um, a fairly responsive engine. It can be a little bit, a little bit laggy at the very start of putting the foot down. It's a 1.5 TSI. You can get an ETSI, get 245 brake horsepower, you can get 300 brake horsepower, you can get the 1.4, that's the, so this is 1.5. Come on, they don't get any greener. Um, and the 1.4 is the plug-in hybrid. Gonna pay even more for that. And it's maybe 60 kilometers worth of range. Whereas if you just fill this with petrol, you'll get about 700 kilometers without having to stop. Obviously, you don't have to get DSG. If you're still into manually changing gears, then you're going to change, you know, save a, quite a bit of money. And you could argue it's more of a, a driver-focused car if you do get a manual uh, gearbox in your Leon. It'll do somewhere between six and eight liters per 100 kilometers. Depends how hard you drive it. I've just flicked it into the sport drive profile. It basically holds on to the gear changes for longer. Doesn't make it any different in terms of exhaust note or even a fake interior exhaust note. I guess if you want a family car, it's kind of like a four family car to be fair, and you want it to look well, well then I see where Cooper are going and I see why you might be interested in it. For me, I'd have to question the 5,000 euro extra over a Seat Leon because it's the same car. And in my summary, I'll give you an idea of, if it were me, and I wanted a Cupra, the model I'd probably be looking at. So do I like the Cupra brand? Yes, I do. Do I think it's quite a walk of 5,000 euro from 
what is essentially the same car? Yes, I also do. What I'd probably do is I'd have a look at the Formentor from Cupra, which is an even more striking looking car, a slightly higher seat position because it's just the, the car sits a little bit higher. It's not quite an SUV, it's more of a crossover type thing. But I, I mean, I like that they've given you a hatchback option. I'm a big fan of hatchbacks. They are better to drive if you don't need all the space and you're not obsessed with sitting ever so slightly higher up. Uh, then fine but i think in this specific case because cupra had the fermentor out on their own if you're going to spend a few quid above what are the other options from the volkswagen group then you might as well go hard in the sense of get something that truly is different because in many ways that is a say it lay on okay the back looks a little bit different the front ever so slightly and it's a little bit more aggressive looking, looking, but it is essentially the same car. So for that reason, I check out the Fermentor, compare the two of them and see which suits you best. What do you think? Is it worth 5,000 euro extra over a Seat Leon? That is my big question. And uh, if you have any comments or thoughts, please do leave them down below. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.